So now we're going to look at the IV curve. And I'm going to start quickly because I expect everyone to be pretty familiar with this. So the red curve is the IV curve, the relationship of current to voltage. The key thing here, the key thing I'm going to say a thousand times, is that an IV curve is a curve of possibilities. It's a curve that describes current voltage pairs. So a module or a cell cannot simply operate at any current and any voltage. It's only specific currents and specific voltages given the environmental conditions. That's what the curve is going to tell us. And what we're going to learn is how come it has that shape. Okay. But this is the typical curve. There's also a power curve that you can draw as well. And it's got the short circuit current, open circuit voltage points. I'm going to move on from this because I assume most of us are familiar. What I'm going to emphasize here, though, is that the solar cell is a passive device. Where it operates on the curve depends on its load, on what it's connected to. The module doesn't tell you where it operates. The load does. For example, simple case would be connecting it to a battery, some sort of battery. In this case, maybe a 12 volt battery. The 12 volt point tells the module to operate at this point on the curve, which happens to be pretty close to short circuit current. But it's the module, it's the load voltage that tells the module where to operate, not the other way around. Now we know that given this condition, a module will charge up a battery and its voltage will rise and it will move along the curve. But it's the battery telling the module, oh, I'm a little more charged, I'm now at 12.5 volts. Okay? Different example would be connecting a uh, a module or a cell to a resistive load, let's say a, a heater, okay, or a resistor. And there again, uh, I, I draw in another curve. This is a line of resistance. And for those not familiar with it, I'm going to use this again later, but this is a curve that shows a resistor line. At a certain voltage, you get a certain current. Double the voltage, you double the current. That's the line of the resistor. And where the line of the resistor intersects the line of the IV curve, that is the operating point of the system of the two of them together. So whatever that resistor is, wherever it hits the curve, that determines the voltage and the current that you get out of the module through the resistor, okay? For example, in order to operate at our max power point on the knee of this particular curve, I would want a resistor of about three and a half ohms. That would give me the maximum power from this particular module, let's say. What about if you connect it directly to a DC motor? Let's say a, a submersible water pump maybe, or a, a direct drive motor or a motor in a vaccine refrigerator compressor. Um, here again, you have a curve that will intersect the IV curve. And wherever it intersects, it's the motor that tells the module to operate at this voltage and this current. And now finally, when we connect it to our electronic devices, let's say our inverters with maximum power tracking circuitry, it's that circuitry in the inverter that tells the module where to operate. So I draw a curve of constant power, which I will show later in different contexts. But that shows me constant power. And wherever that touches the, the knee, that gives me the point of maximum power of that curve. And that electronics tells the module to operate at that voltage and that current. So once again, though, it's the electronics of the load that tells the module where to operate. And finally, we can define something called the fill factor, which basically is, it's really just a measure of goodness. It's how, how square the curve is. You can't actually get a fill factor of one. In fact, a really good cell a module might have a fill factor of like 0 0.8, uh, 0 0.78, 0 0.79. 0 0.8 would be super high. But it's a question really of how close can I get that max power to some sort of ideal idea that would use all the voltage and all the current that I get out. But that's just another way of thinking of the IV curve. 